Welcome to String Joe Show. I am Ryan. You know, we have an amazing artist roster at String Joy, and it's something we care a lot about. We have someone who works here, that is their job, is managing the artist roster, and we're proud of it. And we thought it would be a really great idea to go in and check in with some of these artists, because they're all doing really cool stuff. Today, we're gonna check in with one of the earliest String Joy adopters on the planet, and one of our oldest and dearest friends, Mr. Ariel Poson. Posen, my man, how are you doing? Hey. You, are, you are a hard dude to track down. Uh, last, uh, you just got back from Europe, correct? That's right. Yeah, about two weeks ago to the and day. How, how long? Uh, what were you doing in Europe? Were you touring Europe? Were you doing some session work? Were you what? All touring, of that? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we were on tour. We we're playing shows, uh, some long overdue shows that were supposed to happen in February, uh, got rescheduled to September, October, and. Uh, yeah, we haven't. Well, actually, that's not true. I was going to say we haven't been overseas since before the pandemic, but we did a one off in Estonia this summer. So, OK, uh, I don't it, it, you know, it was it's a place it's a market like the UK and, and some of those other countries is a place that I go to or often. Uh, but I haven't done it since before um, the pandemic. So we had some real, uh, you know, catching up to do. So we did. Is there is do you have like. Do you have a pretty regular audience in this Estonia? I don't even think I could point to no, out on a map. Not that I know of. Okay. Uh, I mean, we 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 played a festival oh, in okay. Estonia, yeah. Got it. Which was awesome. It was really fun. You know, I did I did one one European tour um in my 20s, but like the amount of just sheer coordination that has to be done in order for something like that to go off well is is pretty astounding um i mean to go play a show like with a three-hour drive away most of the time it takes a lot of coordinating just for that that's or, even, or even a local gig you know that's fair uh, that's... It, it, it does take quite a bit i agree with you um just need good organized team and be organized yourself and uh get it done yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So you're sticking around. You're sticking around Canada for a little while, and then you're making some stops in the U.S. I saw Nashville and Nashville, and the yeah. yeah, yeah. We leave. We start another tour in a week today, uh, Western Canada, and then a couple more weeks off, and then yeah, we got just the last few American dates of the year. What's your what's, what's your favorite thing? What's your favorite thing about touring? And follow up. Do you <laughs> do you feel like you're more of a session guy, you feel more at home in a studio. Or do you feel more at home on a stage? Uh, I feel more at home on a stage. I think oh, both. I love both, but I mean, this is what I do. Like I perform. That's, yeah. that's what I have been doing my whole life. I have been recording and, and doing all that stuff uh, a really long time as well, but uh, I really love to perform play for people that's really what I love to do. So my favorite part probably is that, uh, you know, getting to perfect a show, a set, you know, taking it to different places every night, correcting, dialing it in, all those kind of things. And I like traveling too. I like going to new places. I love going to places that I know well and have been many times. Uh, there's just like a nice familiarity to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like touring if there's a balance. Uh, you know, if it's too much of anything, it'll it'll just become a little overwhelming. And that goes for anything in life. And I feel that way with touring. I feel that way with anything. So if you can get that happy medium with moderation, then all the things about touring that I just said, you know, traveling, playing shows, getting coffee, which I didn't say, seeing friends, you know, like uh, uh, that's that's the stuff about tour that I love doing for sure. Sure. How many guitars do you bring in on a tour? Like what's the, what's, what is the, you know, I know when, two, what are they? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm at a point right now where I, like, I don't have a tech or anything like that. So I'm, I'm taking everything with me so I can get by with two guitars easily. So is it the mule caster is one of them, right? Yeah. And what else do you bring in? I've been playing my Jazzmaster quite a bit this year. 
uh, almost exclusively on the road this year. But I, I it's it, it's just two two different guitars and two different tunings. I can cover all the bases of songs that I've written in, in different tunings with those two. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not it doesn't it has nothing to do with like needing a strat or needing a specific type of guitar. It's just more about catering to playing the songs correctly and it, it, it's about like what just like the tuning that they're in so two, two guitars I can ca- kind of use a capo because they're down they're low, lower tuned and stuff like that and I can kind of cover all the bases if I had someone bringing guitars for me and I didn't have to worry about that uh, at the moment which is not a reality uh, then I would bring yeah I'd bring yeah. 10 guitars or I, more for sure I, I don't play as much as you do I you know but um yeah, I'm a I'm a one I one guitar if I can if I can make it last and it's so far I'm not a big string breaker so I mean I think there's a lot of there's a there's an odd focus on trying to make things sound exactly like they did on a record in, you know with live concerts and I always look at them as two very different things I think you know Bono said they were you know you two was two different bands you know it was the studio band and then the live band and- it's all about the camaraderie and and just like making a good show for the yeah. people's playing playing the songs well uh, i'm not terribly married to the idea of replicating the record i think there's parts of what you record that people expect to hear and then there's all these other parts that kind of fall into like this gray area where it doesn't matter as much like you can mm-hmm. be a bit more loose with like what you're playing note for note so i'm kind of with the with the bono frame of mind of like yeah it's not a different band because it is the same band, but, um, you know, th- when I record, I, I there's a lot of overdubs. There's a lot of instrumentation and a lot of things going on, and, and we just make it work for a trio live, and there's a lot of work that goes into it to make that work, and I think we're a pretty full-sounding trio, um, but it changes. Like, you just have to make choices to, okay, we're, well, we're not going to have – it's more so on my end, like on, mm-hmm. on the guitar side where it's like, okay – I wish <laughs> I could grow two more hands that could play another guitar at the same time to play this part. But like, I'm going to have to sacrifice that part and play this part because I think it just serves the song better sure. as a trio. And, and it's it, kind of it, fun doing that too. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're a great songwriter and, uh, and you also, um, you, you have the ability to let the song be the ultimate decider of what happens you know where you know like i think you know people who aren't necessarily songwriters or great songwriters you know just kind of like the guitar players you know typically want to hear themselves and you know want to do whatever is going to be the coolest thing for them but you know what i'm hearing from you is like the song is king the song decides you know yeah. like what we do song is king i mean don't get me wrong i'm, I'm known for, uh as a guitar player and i like to play guitar uh, the songs are not guitar songs Right. at all it's not guitar music um but guitar definitely is the the instrument or the tool that i use to fully you know express myself other than singing i guess mm-hmm. it's lyrics and stuff like that yeah but it's How- the main tool so I, I i definitely lean on it and uh you that's what i have to use that's just i have no choice that's just what i chose a long time ago yeah um, but you it's know- not like it's not guitar music yeah so it doesn't like there's that that pressure of like, oh, some get, some people might want to find a bunch of guitar moments. And I think we do that anyways, um, while still making it more about the songs. I don't know. I'll let other people decide that. Sure. But I try, I try to make it kind of accessible for uh, for anybody listening, not just right. yeah, um, absolutely. a fan of guitar. You know, the, the, yeah. the records, the records are like, I don't know. There's songs, there's guitar moments, but like live, we definitely stretch out a bit more and, and have a bit more fun, so to speak, on certain songs and and, and play, I, you know? I, I kind of feel like, and I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like in the, you know, like you, um, I'm making an assumption here. I think that you and I are relatively the same age. So you lived through the 80s and 90s and you remember when like you could become this great, rock star you know the satriani's the steve vise you know like just going out and 
playing guitar and putting out instrumental guitar records and stuff like that. And I kind of feel like the audience, the musical listener of 2022 expects more than that. Um, I just don't know. Like, aside from like the jazz world and stuff like that, I, d- does it feel like you could even go out and make a substantial career or a livable career just, you know, doing guitar stuff? I don't know if you could. I think you just have to be, you know, you have to be a tree, so to speak, or you have a bunch of different branches. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's there's guitar players out there that make a killing just yeah. by being known as guitar players who have been doing it in the since the 80s and the 90s. Right. And they still continue to be very successful, putting out records, touring, probably doing clinics, teaching, stuff like that. But there, I'm seeing more and more and more of that, you know, and the, the pandemic definitely brought that out and a lot more people with just like okay i gotta teach now i gotta i gotta create content now i gotta do this i gotta do that i mean i grew up listening to bands and stuff like that. i didn't even pay attention to guitar players until i was like 16 or 17 and so what inspired me was seeing bands just being on stage playing songs that's that's what really spoke to me but i but like i i started as a, a freelance session musician a hired gun Yep. Um, and so I came up as just like, okay, I need to be this Swiss army knife to fit in a bunch of different artists and bands pictures, so to speak. Uh, cause you're being hired to make them sound good yep. and, and, and serve their songs. And from there, I, it just kind of gave me a clear idea of like, okay, if I ever do my own thing, I think I know how, <clears throat> how to approach it. I know that like the reality of only playing shows, you know, there's so many, costs that go into it when when you're traveling and touring and all, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I was grateful that when I decided to start doing a solo thing, I already had my hands in a bunch of different uh, pots, so to speak. You know, I was already doing a lot of YouTube stuff overseas and I was doing a, like teaching and I'd go do clinics or master classes, other stuff. I would do video stuff. I, I don't know. I was just doing a bunch of other stuff and, and then when the world shut down, it's like, okay, no, no more gigs. It was just like, yeah. okay, well, I'm really uh, feeling grateful that I have all this other stuff. Yeah. I what I'd be doing otherwise. So when in your, so, you know, you, you listen to bands and you're younger, you're 16, you're kind of like, hey, there's a guitar player there. I'm into that. Um, where in your like career or your guitar playing career your guitar playing whatever you want to call it did you stop and go slide you know like because i think i feel like everybody stops and goes slide and then they try it you know at a young age they go that's hard and most of us just never went back to it um but how was it where were you in your playing when you decided slide and how did you come to that uh i i just like everyone else you just Hey, I should probably buy one of those, you know, mm-hmm. never, never put much thought to it, uh, but played it. And I started, you know, playing gigs and, and being a hired gun when I was about 18. I already started playing in scenarios where, hey, can you please take the slide part on this? Oh, yeah. OK. Or can you take the this thing or do that thing? You know, like yeah, I started to like mentally be in that space where. Okay, things that like might not be my main thing, I just need to be able to do that if like on a dime if someone calls for that because that's what the job is. And I think I just took a like I had a knack for it. Like what I mean by that is like I liked it, it felt natural and uh some people, you know, oftentimes they'd be like, "Hey, really like this the the slide thing. Like why don't you do more of it on this song?" And so I was like, "Oh, okay. That that mm-hmm. sounds good." And I was listening to uh, a few different bands and slide players specifically that were really inspiring me. So I, I delved deeper into that once I started uh, listening to them a lot. And just naturally, it just became, I guess, a part of my voice where uh, I found a, a, a very natural way to express myself with it. And just used it to like not to to, to run a different way creatively with it and try to say something different than what a lot of fantastic slide players that I grew up listening to uh, might not have done, I guess. Like I'm not, it wasn't about like 
rewriting anything or changing the game because it's sure. not what's going on. Well, but just like putting my own spin on it and just like I just really found it inspiring and a way to embellish things that I was already playing and saying and, and to just take it somewhere else. You know? Yeah, it's it's an interesting medium because on one hand, it's been around forever, right? Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, there's still a fair amount of uncharted territory with slide. Slide players, to me at least, it's like a very unique set of skills and it's very like it's a very unique pedigree you know you uh, to it you know like de- you know developing slide chops is very different than any other thing you're going to do on guitar and stuff like it just you know kind of an understanding um so it's a, it's almost to me it's almost like playing a completely different instrument you just don't you don't i feel like it can be very daunting for a lot of people including myself so you don't you don't see a lot of really you know, you have some of the really great slide players that we all know. Um, and then, but you just don't see a lot of, you know, there, there are more, uh, there are more fretted players than slide players. Well, it's just not as common of a thing. And I think a lot of people think of slide a little closed minded. Like they think of it as, Oh, well you only play almond brothers or you only play Delta blue stuff or, you know what I mean? I think, I think it has a, like, I'm not, I don't force it into a, everything I do uh, when, when I'm doing sessions or I'm producing for other artists or playing stuff, you know, a lot of times, which I'm grateful for and, and is very cool. People will say like, we want you to just do your thing, like play a slide thing on it. Okay. Then that's great. But yeah, if I, if I have the choice, if I'm just producing a record or a song for someone, it's not like I think, right. Right. Slide, you know, no, no. Uh, and yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to, like pigeonhole your entire <laughs> guitar career into playing slide at all. It's just, you know, it is one of those things that you're um, exceedingly good at. And so it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that. Well, I, thanks. Yeah. Thanks they, who, I mean, who were you, who were you listening to at the time? Who are you listening to now? Well, I grew up on the Beatles and I started. So uh, George. Listening. Yeah. I, 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 it was at a time where, uh, the, the anthology came out and, you know, we started seeing all the, we've now seen even more of the footage in the get back documentary. Yeah. Um, just the little things like playing lap steel on the let it be sessions and stuff like that. And then they did this, uh, these songs with John's old demos, I guess they did real love free. and free as a bird. And it was a great slide. The slide solo. solo. Yeah, yes. was epic. That was kind I, of one of my first, like, hmm, that's really something else i love that obviously it's like it wasn't that it was slide it was just like a beautiful george solo you know that you could have played that on a piano and it would have sounded amazing um and then you know there's some bands i was listening to a lot of rock and and like all the stuff that was popular in the 90s um and and then i started you know i started listening i I, yeah i I saw derek yeah, the flaming lips, like extreme out of tune slide, and you know, or like, like white zombie, like yeah. that kind of stuff. Like using yeah. it as really as an effect to yep. uh, to to not be slide guitar, but for it to be some kind of just strange. Like what is that? It's Don't almost know. like yeah. a it's like a synth, it's like a synth hit, you know, like yeah, vroom, exactly. you know, exactly, exactly. Uh, and then and then I I started listening like once I got into guitar players and stuff like that, I. I, I started putting time into, you know, all the classics. I, I never really listened to the Allman Brothers, hilariously enough, and Dwayne Allman. It was, you know, I listened to, uh, like, Ry Cooter, Bonnie Raitt, uh, I mean, George Harrison, and I, I had Derek Trucks, like, getting into the m- more modern guys. Uh, and there's a Canadian guy named Kevin Bright, who's fantastic, who, who's he's one of my favorite players and kind of, when I first heard him, that's when I was just like, okay, I think I want to explore open tuning and like try to explore some of the things I'm hearing because this is what's really speaking to me. It's not so much of like the slide being used as a blues thing, slide more as like a melodic thing. Not as much even like as a gospel-y thing, just like it, it's, it was just took up this own different space that I kind of didn't hear that that's really what spoke to me. Um, and, and this day I don't really listen to any guitar players ever. I, I like to listen still to bands and songs and, and that's, that's well, just what, what inspires me more. Yeah, no, I get that. What's, uh, what's on your, what's on the, the Spotify or the record player right now. That's, uh, that you're liking. 
Like, what do you? What um, do you let's see here. I've been listening to that new Marcus Mumford record a lot, which mm-hmm. is very, very good. Another slide player, but like also perfect example of like great guitar player, but serves the song and just plays anything that's needed, like Blake Mills, right? So he produced mm-hmm. that. Um, what else have I been listening to? Um, the new Kendrick Lamar record I love. Uh, I've been putting time into Dawn by Yeba for over a year. Lizzie McAlpine threw out a record that's amazing that I've been listening to. I'm a big Billie Eilish fan. Foy Vance put out a Foy Vance put out a record a year ago, which is unbelievable that I, I still haven't stopped listening to. Madison Cunningham put out a new record that's really great. Um, stuff like that. I, I've been listening to a lot of that stuff. I've also been listening to uh, Revolver. They just put out. Uh, yeah. They just re-released and remixed Revolver, which is really cool. I was like, it doesn't. It's not really going to sound that different. And uh, was it Giles? Yeah. Did Giles remix it? It, it was i'm not uh, sure who makes it actually i have no um, idea. I think it, it, it yeah they've been doing those with um with giles and it, it yeah i mean it's like you hear kick for the first time you're like oh my god rico played kick that just sounds yeah. wider and, and yeah. like they kept the essence of it but they just yeah it's like it's like putting a limiter on everything and just yeah <laughs> hiking yeah. it up a bit more yeah really cool you have a set of string joy strings that you are kind of known for playing. It's pretty, it's pretty unique. It's set up for you. It's something that you, uh, I understand you and Scott worked together on. How, how did that project come about? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I've been working with Scott for seven years now, long time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I've told the story maybe a million times. <laughs> so if anyone's listening to this, they've probably heard it. So I won't really get into it, but. Uh, I, I wanted to basically turn any guitar, uh, like standard scale guitar into a baritone guitar. So like B E A D F sharp B like a baritone standard D standard tuning. And yeah, we just tried a bunch of different back and forths of finding the right gauge for it. Primarily like on strat style guitars, telly style guitars. And, uh, yeah, I, I really lean on or I, I leaned on Scott a lot for his advice at first to, to find what would make sense ergonomically, what would make sense just in every way, shape or form to make it work. And, uh, and then we found it eventually a few back and forths and yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm super pleased. And, you know, I love Scott. He's just, just a great guy and so helpful and, and so down for the cause, so to speak, yeah. to just like yeah. chase, chase something down and try to find, um, the right thing so that that goes a long way and i don't think i I would have been able to find it without a guy like him yeah you'd be hard pressed to find anybody nerdier about strings than scott mark (laughs) so one of the things i i have always used string joe strings for was just like the sheer longevity of it being with something like that thick and also that you're playing slide you know what would you say half the time um like, do you, Maybe. do you go through, like, do you feel like you go through strings quickly or like, or is it No, more? I actually, well, I like dead strings and I, I'm notorious for milking a set of strings as long as I can. Uh, it's funny, you were talking about breaking strings earlier. Uh, like, I almost never break strings and I don't mean that in a pretentious way. Uh, it just, I guess, doesn't really happen that much with the, with the heavier strings. I still bend and, and, and you know, play like I normally would on a standard guitar, but it's just very rare that I break a string. And I broke a string finally, uh, the last song of the last show of this tour in Berlin, which is hilarious. <laughs> it just like never happens. Uh, but I like deader strings. I don't actually like um, when strings are super new. When I, Whenever I get to a point where it's like, all right, time to change strings. And I do, I'll just do it on a, on a handful of guitars at a time while I'm in the zone for it. And it, it always just takes me, I don't know, a week or two of playing it until it feels, it's like getting a haircut, you know, when you get your haircut and, uh, well, right. depending if you like your hair short or not, you know, for me, I feel like I get a haircut and then like eight or nine days after it's like, okay, now it looks the That's way it. I want it to be. That's how I feel like, with new strings 
That's a great, that's a great metaphor. That's, I mean, that's perfect. Thank you for taking time out to let us check in with you. Um, just got back from Europe. You still got more touring left this year. So people are going to have a chance to see you still. And then I assume yeah. back, back in the studio and back at it with another set of songs and Maybe. do it all over again. Maybe. Um, yeah. And then uh, do you have any more uh, True Fire lessons coming out? I, the three that you got are pretty heady as is. Uh, it's a bit to uh, unpack, but if, if somebody has, you got some other stuff? I do actually, yeah. We finally did did some slide courses. So I don't know when that'll come out, but probably either at the end of the year or beginning of the, of the new year. Cool. That's so yeah, awesome, more to man. come. All sure. right. Well, we will see you in 2023, my friend. Okay, man. All right. Thanks.